Hi everyone, Spicy Sushi here. So, as promised, I wanted to create a video detailing some league start um, mapping strategies that could potentially make you a lot of money uh, the first two weeks of the league if you're the type of person that usually likes to do something like that. Now, these strategies are going to assume that you have progressed the atlas uh, to the point where you're ready to start farming a specific one of these zones on your atlas. Now, if you want a guide on how to do that quickly, uh, I will post Grimrose Leapfrog strategy in the description. If you um, follow his guide, you should easily find yourself at Awakening level 6 or however high you want to push. Um, and at that point, I would recommend uh, moving on to an Atlas farming strategy because it's always very important uh, to get as much bonus, as many bonus objectives as possible. Uh, before you start something like an actual atlas strategy now if you did not know the atlas is not being shuffled whatsoever so every single map here that you see in standard right now is exactly what it's going to be in 3.14 ultimatum the only thing that is changing is these um, some of these maven passives on different zones some are moved around some are nerfed very few are buffed, but yeah, the only one that has received no changes at all is Uncharted Realms. Besides, Neural Pathways has been buffed to 1% chance. Now, I'm just going to get this out of the way early on. If you want to know a reliable way to make money early on, I would say week one would probably be Guardian's Aid bossing, and then I could see it potentially being good week two, week three, week four, week five, week six, week seven, yep, all the way to the end of the league, actually. I, I, I think this is going to be a very consistent moneymaker. There is absolutely no way it won't be a reliable moneymaker early on, especially if you jump into this, uh, like day two, day three. That is why a lot of people are playing miners because they want to jump into Guardian's Aid farming very early on. If you don't know what that is, you can actually watch one of my YouTube videos. I will link it uh, here, but that is basically what many people are going to be doing early on to make many, many exalts the first week of the league. Uh, but if you're like me, uh, my build cannot do this day two of the league uh, reliably. Um, my Vortex Occultus, I need to switch to low life before I can really do this efficiently, or else it's actually kind of a waste of time because of how slow the DPS is before I switch to low life to do something as hard as Guardian's Aid. Because this is a very um this is a very difficult mechanic if your build is not like a miner, especially since carrying golems have been nerfed to the ground. So things can be really different. But we're going to talk about outside of that mapping strategies. So I'm going to quickly go over the regions that I see to be interesting, starting with Lyra Arthane. So if you did not know, when you corrupt a blighted map now, a blighted map as in it's a separate zone with a gigantic like tower defense game in it. Um, if it's corrupted, the chests in the maps have a drop chance to drop tainted oils, which can be used to anoint corrupted items. So this is incredibly strong for uh, like something like talismans um, or other, you know, there's many other uses for corrupting, I mean, uh, anointing corrupted items. So these are going to be in very high demand. Now, um, immune response, this node right here, the only thing that is changing is blight monsters are going to be spawning 150% faster. So you're going to be running through these blights that you get in this area extremely quickly. Now the problem is, you are not guaranteed to get a Blight when you do a map here in Lyra Arthane. Um, but if you do get a Blight, this node right here, uh, Epidemiology, you're going to be getting significantly more uh, Blighted maps uh, when you get um, Blighted chests. I don't know what the... This is not a guaranteed chance of getting a Blighted map from a chest. This is simply a times two chance on whatever the um, passive chance is from each chest but you will see a significant amount of blighted maps. Now, Spores of the Wind makes it so maps on the areas have a 10% chance to, ha to have an area contains an additional blight encounter, 
This is not guaranteed to be from Lyra Arthane. It'll be a map that drops that has that enchantment, but it is not guaranteed to be in this region. So the issue is, is that you are not guaranteed to get blights. Now you can guarantee this with blight scarabs. Now, how expensive blight scarabs are, I have no clue. We are going to see how the economy reacts to this, but potentially if you could get your hand on some blight scarabs, this could be incredibly strong. Um, you do get to pick six nodes per region. So if you wanted to farm this area, you could choose these three. And now let's move on to the other three. Now, if you did not know, the second highest uh, Xana map craft is actually going to be heist. It's going to be six chaos orbs, and it's going to guarantee that the area is going to contain two additional smugglers' caches. Now, combined with secret stash, that is going to be an extra chance to get a third smuggler's cache. So if you get a third smuggler's cache, um, you're going to get three chances at getting blueprints from inside job. Now, this is a 100% increased chance to drop blueprints. This is going to be incredibly strong, especially if um, they proc the 10% chance to be fully revealed. Now, I think heists are gonna be strong in general this league because of the different changes that they've made to heist so if you are wanting to farm heist early this could be potentially extremely strong if you unlock that map passive or that map craft which again you need to be completing i believe it's awakening bonus objectives to be unlocking heist so you do need to work on your atlas progression as fast as possible if you want to get into something like this getting three smugglers caches potentially per map now if you'll notice, I have not gone over the bestiary changes. Um, the issue is, is that, um, let me find what I had written about this. Okay, so rare beasts are going to be incredibly rare because there are going to be no more multi-boxing. So people aren't going to be able to use bots, well, unless they're automated bots, because you need to be at least two screens from where the beast is killed to get the beast. So... Uh, we are going to be getting incredibly less, incredibly less rare monsters on the marketplace. So that means when you get a good beast, it will have some significant value since there are going to be 10 more beast crafts added. And I'm sure some of them could be incredibly profitable. But the issue is, is that um, natural selection, they have nerfed it. And, then, and rare beasts are no longer going to be as common. So this, they've nerfed this node, so you're going to see beasts incredibly less often as a solo player, and you can't multi-box anymore. Well, people can't multi-box anymore, so there's going to be less on the market. So you could take this node if you wanted to, but keep in mind, you may never see a rare beast that's actually profitable. You may never actually run into one worth selling. So let's see, you could... I have not gone over the, uh, the breach nodes because... Um, this is just not simply something I could see being worth um, worth the time, to be honest, compared to these others. So what you could take is Spores of the Wind, Epidemiology, or Immune Response, just for the passive chance at getting a Blight while you're farming these Heists. Or what you could do is wait for Breach Scarabs, or not Breach Scarabs, sorry, Blight Scarabs, to then farm this to really um, farm this significantly. So one, two, three, four, five, you would get access to one more node, which you could put on Animal Companion, or if you really don't care about immune response and you don't care how fast the blight is, you could just simply take Natural Selection, Animal Companion, Inside Job, Secret Stash, Epidemiology, and Spores on the Wind, and you could use the Xana Mapcraft to get inside job um, to really buff this out to be getting a lot more blueprints because you'll be getting three smugglers caches and you could be getting a lot of revealed blueprints from this. So you could farm a lot of heist, you could farm a lot of blighted maps to sell or corrupt and run, and you could also potentially be getting rare beasts. So Lyra Arthane has a lot of potential in my opinion, a lot more than most of these areas right now because of how significantly everything's been nerfed. So I'm going to go over Lex Proxima. Um, basically, 
the heart of the grove, this has, is going to be completely changed to where it is no longer going to be a 100% increased chance to contain the heart of the grove. Basically, it's going to be if you get a tier four plant, that boss is going to guaranteed drop a heart of the grove map fragment, which these map fragments are going to be incredibly valuable because they have buffed Oshabi's rewards and crafters are going to half to kill Oshabi because if they do, their Horta crafting station gets upgraded in storage space. So this will be very, very, um, very, very profitable if you do get one of these map fragments. But the thing is, is that bumper crop has been nerfed. So basically, you're just going to be getting an additional harvest in the Sacred Grove, which I, I guess you have a higher chance at getting a tier four plant if that's the case. So you could have another chance of getting a tier four plant. Yeah. So harvest chance has actually been buffed from 0.2 to 0.3%. So if you stack um, all three of these, you will be getting a 9% flat chance to get the heart of the grove. Now, I guess that stacks as well with the passive chance of getting it. So you do have a pretty significant chance of getting harvest on your maps. Now, if you want to farm heart of the grove, now, what was the other area? Okay, so the Delve got buffed early Delve awards. So Delve might be incredibly profitable to run early on. So you might wanna take this as well. So Rich Veins, these are not being changed at all. So Rich Veins, Sulfite Infusion, as well as Packed with Energy are all going to be the same. This provides really no bonus unless if you just want to be speedy while mapping. So basically Rich Veins, you will get a chance for double sulfite, 20% sulfite, increased sulfite, um, Nico mission chance increase, and sulfite infusion is the big one. When you run red maps, which we will obviously be running red maps here, you're gonna be getting a lot more sulfite. And that stacks with this. So you can run delve quite a lot while you're farming this zone for harvest to get Oshabi map fragments. And Seance has been nerfed to the ground, so I would not take this as your last node. Potentially you could if you roll the Sexton a lot, where Scarabs, um, possessed mo uh, rares will drop Scarabs. So, you know, three additional Scarabs, while Scarabs in this economy are gonna be very valuable, that could be worth taking. Or you could just take something like Gatekeepers. So you could get some um, Breach Stones, which are gonna be incredibly valuable this league because, you know, Delirious mapping is 100% uh, fractured mapping is not going to be a thing. I don't believe anymore. So breach stones are going to be much more rare. So you could take gatekeepers, bountiful harvest. Um, I mean, you kind of have to take bountiful harvest honestly if you want to maximize your chance at getting the heart of the grove stuff, because you'd be missing out on this 3% bonus flat chance. So if you're wanting to maximize harvest, you could do one, two, three four, five, and then take gatekeepers. Or if you really want within their grasp for a 10% flat chance to drop a breach stone from a breach boss, then, and plus the breach stones will be getting significantly buffed. You could just forget Bountiful Harvest, settle with the 6% flat chance, take the sulfite nodes, and then smacks out the breach over here. Now, if you don't care about sulfite at all, if you just don't care about delve whatsoever, you could just do breach, you could do harvest. So one, two, three, four, five, and then you could take seance uh, just for some, you know, a little bit of a bonus quality, or you could do rich veins um, for when you do get, you know, sulfite. So there's a lot of options for Lex Proxima. It looks very promising uh, because of the increase in value of breach stones, as well as the map fragment from for Oshabi. Yeah, that's my summarization of that area. Now, Lexajorus, I'm not going to talk about much. I don't think it's worth to run your incursions here if you get incursions, if you're wanting to sell temples. So this does not seem valuable to me. They have completely nerfed the Delirium part. They have completely nerfed the Parandus part and they have significantly nerfed Metamorph. So I'm not going to talk much at all about Lexajorus. There is some potential magic finding for incursion because they are adding if you did not know, they are removing cultural advancement from Glenac 
which makes all incursion monsters magic, and they are moving it to Lexajorus. So there is some potential magic finding here because you're getting quantity increase on these small passives, and you are getting more Alva missions. Um, the incursion architect architects dropping one additional rare that is not going to be a thing anymore. Um, so. Yeah, so yeah, I, I don't see much hope in this zone. Now, there is one redeeming factor. Even though Pathological has been nerfed from 10% to 5% on maps, when you do get a map, it will hold some value because Delirium Orbs are going to be significantly more rare in this economy because of the map drop changes. You're going to be seeing Delirium Orbs much less often. I think really only from Delirium Mirrors is what I heard. So... If you get your Delirium Mirror and you get orbs, it's going to be um, worth more. The problem is, is that there is not a Delirium Mirror buff here. So yeah, I, I'm really not excited about Lexajorus. Now, um, turns end. So this is interesting. Exotic Goods has been changed. So now it causes a wider selection of items to be dropped. Now... If you take Trespassers and Exotic Goods, you are going to be guaranteed to get some of these valuable items, whatever they are. Now, I watched a video of Slippery Gem testing this in Ritual, and it was absolutely horrendous. So I'm not going to be the one to test this, but I will be looking forward to maybe if Slippery Gem actually tests this again, if he wants to, to see if they've improved this significantly, because they would have to very significantly buff this node for me to try this again. Now, big game, it now has a 15% chance for Yellow Beast to be replaced with Red Beast, previously 30%, so they are heavily nerfing this, and um, they are actually buffing Great Migration. So it's going from a 5% chance to a 10% chance for areas with Einhart missions to contain additional packs of beasts instead of other monsters. So I still don't really see a lot of potential in this. I mean, if you do get some rare beasts, you do get more red beasts, and you do get, you do get a good craft, it could be worth money. But they've really, really nerfed, they're really nerfing the availability of these beast crafts for sure. So I don't have much to say about this. Now there is a redeeming factor of turns in, and that is Abyss. So the thing with Abyss is that um, Abyss Scarabs, these are now going to drop Abyss Scarabs, Abyss content is going to drop Abyss Scarabs, and Jewels, Abyss Jewels are going to be dropping Well Rolled. They have the new Well Rolled uh, drop system, which I'm not entirely sure how it works. I think it's basically it rolls like a certain number of times and the drop picks the best of those rolls. So however many rolls that is, it picks the best. So you may be seeing some pretty good, good Abyss rolls drop, especially with the new modifiers. But the main thing is Stygian Vises can only be found in Abyssal Depths now, potentially. So that means a high item level Stygian Vise will have an insane amount of value early on. So basically, we are from this area, um, for each increased pack size, we are going to be getting a higher chance to have an abyss, and abysses are having an increased chance to lead to an abyssal depths. Again, not guaranteed. 100% increase does not mean guaranteed. And abyssal depths are not 100% guaranteed to contain a lich. These are just 100% increased chance on the uh, passive chance. So... Lightless Legion, um, plus three to monster level, so you could be seeing, I think that means higher item level, so Abyssal Depths will just have a flat plus three to the, to the monster level, so I guess that means you'll be getting item level, high item level Stygian Vises much more common, or much easier, much more easily, sorry. And Buried Riches, you could get Exalts, additional, like basic currency items, if you did not know, that does contain Exalts. So this could be, Abyss could be worth farming, but I don't really see some good combinations. Um, now this is strong, that which you seek, I won't lie, because Delirium Orbs, one of the only content I'm pretty sure they can even come from now, is Delirium Mirrors. So because of that, 
um, getting a delirium mirror has some insane value actually. So if you honestly want to just farm out some abyss and farm some uh, delirium, that this is a very strong region. Now, um, greater forces, I think that might combat the nerf where delirium rewards slow down the earlier you get into the elite into the delirium. I'd have to say, I have to see, but definitely that which you seek is going to be strong. Um, so maybe one, two, three, four, and we have two more choices. If you want to test out exotic goods, you could take that as your last two. You could take the beasts as your last two for a, you know, the small chance, which it will be a very small chance, but you could hit a valuable beast craft or with your two remaining, you could take singular and greater forces because you'll also be getting these small passive bonuses, by the way. Um, increased stack size of, size of simulacrum splinters, and simulacrums are always worth a good amount of money. Now, three more zones to go through, guys. So I'm going to start with Glenac. So Glenac is definitely going to be where you want to throw your Atlas missions, because as you probably know from patch notes, you are when you kill a non-resident architect, so that's basically when you go in an incursion and the architect that you choose to kill which that is what upgrades the room, there's going to be a 50% chance to add an additional upgrade tier. So if your sacrifice chamber is level one, you kill the architect for that in your incursion, there's a 50% chance that it goes straight to level three. So if you can just get a ton of level three rooms that are extremely valuable, you, and you turn that into a map, you're going to have an insanely valuable temple. Like if you have a level three jewel corruption and a level three item uh, sacrifice, yeah, that's going to be uh, like a double corrupt. That's going to be absolutely insanely powerful. Now, cultural advancement has been removed, so that is not something we even have to consider anymore. But uh, contested development is going to be very interesting. So basically the architect that... Um, okay, so Resident Architect, sorry, I should have totally uh, gone over this again. So Resident Architect is basically the architect that you are killing to not change, to not upgrade the room, but to change the room from its current reward to a different reward. Um, this is going to add an upgrade tier to it. So this is just going to passively pretty much buff um, upgrading your temple. So this is where you want to throw your incursion uh, missions, definitely. You want to come to Glenac and you want to do your incursion miss missions here to build up a temple to sell. Now, other than that, there are some interesting thoughts when it comes to Legion, some de de definitely interesting ideas. So monumental. Now, I do want to go over this. A lot of people are still hyped up from how incredible Legion was in uh ritual now that is because uh rusted legion scarabs were incredibly cheap and we had legion on the xana map device now we don't have the xana map device anymore so we already lose one guaranteed legion and legion scarabs are probably going to be much more expensive now because uh scarabs are not going to be all over the economy like they were last week just one example of that is the fact that fractured mapping is gone. So you're probably early on going to have to just bet on a 10% chance to contain a Legion encounter, just 10% bonus chance on the passive chance that there already is. Now, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you do want to farm Legion, you are going to have to either shovel out lots of money for scarabs, as rare as they might be, or just take the 10% chance. Now, if you do hit that 10% chance, there is some good value because there are three new incubators, Metamorph Incubator, as well as Blight Incubator, as well as Delirium Incubator, which we don't really know potentially what these are going to drop. But if the Metamorph Incubator drops stacks of, of catalysts, that's good. If not, um, not good. The Delirium Incubators, if they don't drop Delirium Orbs, but they do drop maps with delirium uh, layers on them. That's okay. But if not, if they just drop simulacrum splinters, they're bad. Um, and the blight incubator, if they drop blighted maps, good. If not, 
not looking forward to that. So Legion is really up in the air. You would probably really have to just experiment with this. Uh, but high value targets, which was previously in, previously in Nuvastir, is getting added to Glenac. But the issue with high value targets is now it is only a 10%, 25% chance uh, per Legion Sergeant to hold a reward. So they are not guaranteed to have rewards. They have a they have a one in four chance. So that is a pretty significant nerf on those. When I was doing this, I did not know how much of an impact they were having, but it it that is a hefty nerf if if they are dropping at that low. It must have been pretty valuable to have them. Now face to face, the problem is double splinters from these generals is getting nerfed. That is no longer going to be in the game. So overall, they have really gutted. Uh, the exalt per hour potential that Legion had last league. Now, some final notes. So basically, definitely do your incursions here. I Maybe if you want to buff some beyond, because guess what? They are taking uh, this node. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But basically, they are taking that node and putting it in Glenac. So, but it's getting nerfed to 25% chance. There are some very very hefty magic finding uh potent there's some hefty magic find potential here because they are nerfing um torn veil to 50 percent increased merging radius but this is going to be one of the only places we can get natural beyond you cannot get beyond on the map device anymore it is going to be only from sextants rolling the mod on your map which is rare or taking this node to always have beyond on every map you do very low chance of beyond but it's still going to be beyond so if and keep in mind the alice has not been shuffled so good old tower is still going to be potentially good if you guys remember my 20 percent tower strat i will probably potentially be trying that because if i can buff out beyond as well as take um this node that's going to be just a lot of additional basic currency it's going to be like a baby nemesis if you guys remember the Nemesis Sextant, as well as Scent of Blood, Torn Veil, that is three nodes that are gonna be insanely strong in combination with Twice Tempted and Tamper Proof as usual last league. So we're just gonna be getting uh, maybe with some Strongbox Scarabs. This is a later league thing that I would try though. But yeah, just wanted to throw it out there. So what did I write about Nuvastir? So, okay. Um. Yeah, there's nothing I really have to say about Nuvastir, actually. Um, yeah, not much at all. I think if you want to farm Abyss, your best bet is definitely Turn's End. Uh, Soulfight Hoarding Monsters have been marked as more dangerous, but more rewarding now. I'm not sure what that means, but that could potentially be strong. Uh, but Legion farming is already going to be in a very rough spot, and we're not even getting a very high passive increased chance. You'd have to take all three of these nodes. No, this is gone now, actually. So you have to take both of these nodes for just a 6% chance at containing a Legion. And if you did hit the Legion, there is some good potential there with Watchstone bonuses. But yeah, I'm not too excited about this zone. Maybe someone can prove me wrong. Last zone, guys. So, hey, work. Now, okay, I forgot. Actually, Valdos. I did want to go over Valdos one time. Metamorph buffs to new catalysts could make Metamorph worth taking. Syndicate. This is not where you want to go to get Katarinas as fast as possible, but it is where you want to go to get um, high ranks as fast as possible on your um, missions. Because these are not changing, guys. These are not changing at all. The problem is Harbingers. Okay, now I have heard that the King Harbinger that is replacing Diplomatic Escort is not the Beachhead King, but is just a normal crowned Harbinger with a cape. Now, I don't know how true this is, but very high up content creators have said that's how it is. It's just a normal crowned Harbinger, which has a higher chance at good rewards. Um, if that's the case, this place is absolutely dead for Harbinger farming. There is, I have a I have high doubts that that's actually what that is, though. I think a King Harbinger, at, at, at least, I see absolutely no reason why GGG totally dumped this to the ground if they did. But in my opinion, what a King Harbinger should be, and if it is, is going to be the Beachhead Harbinger King that spawns uh, waves of Harbingers that you can do. This, I think, would be a very 
reasonable nerf because it's basically you're getting probably like half the amount of harbingers on average but um and it's going to take longer to do but you can still get those rewards but i don't know how much ancient orbs are even going to be anyway so maybe harbingers are just dead on arrival this league but yeah i don't really see much going on here with baldos i don't see blight really worth doing here when you could just do it in lyra arthane unless metamorph is really strong but you could buff out your Syndicate is going to be good for the new Syndicate rewards, so I'm sorry if I'm just trashing someone's strategy, but I don't see a whole lot of value there. But last but not least, Haywork. Now, I am considering this zone because, if you did not know, this Beyond, these two Beyond nodes are getting removed, and added in place of that is going to be two new Ritual nodes. So... The two small passive nodes for Ritual going here is going to be um, Monster Sacrifice at Ritual Altars in areas grant 10% increased tribute. So you're going to get 20% increased tribute if you take both of the big nodes. And you're going to get Sacred Lands, probably going to be right here, which Sacred Lands is going to grant a 10% increase, like flat increased chance for areas to contain a Ritual Altar. And the next node is going to be Paid in Blood which allows you to reroll favors two additional times while also getting a 100% increased chance of ritual altars with special rewards. So that is going to be incredibly strong in my opinion if you have blood-filled vessels, which gives you, you're already going to be getting some buffed tribute from the two small passives, but if you combine that, sorry I'm mousing over the beyond nodes i'm just simulating because they'll actually that's probably what they'll be next week but the paid and blood node is going to make it so if you have a blood filled bet vessel combined with the 20 percent increased tribute from the small passives you're going to be getting an insane amount of favor to trade in on each uh, ritual probably they might even be passively buffing the amount of tribute you get to begin with because you're not going to see rituals guaranteed unless you have the sextant so you might see some incredibly good rewards from Ritual early on, which is why I kind of want to go to this area as my first mapping strategy. Because I also want to take Syndicate. This is not changing at all, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't have it in my notes, but yeah, I don't think this is changing at all. So Intelligence Gathering, you're going to be getting 10% um, Intelligence, or sorry, 10 Intelligence to a random Immortal Syndicate safe house. So you'll be getting you and you'll 10% increased chance for June mission on completion 5% so 15% more reinforcements likely chance for reinforcements which basically means that a syndicate uh, master is going to be accompanied has a 15% more likely chance to have a companion with them and then bribery is staying the same which I've never gotten anything good from bribery so I'm up in the air about this but that could be potentially strong I am thinking maybe focused because I do want to push Katarina's very early on simply because when you do Katarina now, all of the rooms underneath her hideout are going to be upgraded one tier. So if I can push Katarina's fast, there should be a lot of profit there just with Veiled Chaos Orbs and as well as um, just, you know, rewards getting possibly pushed to tier four, which apparently is twice as good as tier three. But yeah, so I could see these two and then as we know essences are getting buffed so this could be incredibly strong um so one two three four and then five six for ritual now i could take harvest i'm not interested in crafting but as you see wild fruit you have a hundred percent increased chance to contain a tier four plant uh if you do get a tier four plant there is a chance that you could get the Sacred Blossom map fragment, the Oshabi map, fra map fragment. So you could, I just stumbled so many words there, but you could see some map fragments from this. I don't think they'd be as efficient, maybe not as efficient as Essences. I'll just be watching Essence, the Essence Economy by like day two or day three. I'm going to see how much Essences are worth because it could be these two rituals rolling sextants on my maps to try to hit the ritual sextant but then definitely pushing these two nodes to get a lot of Katarina's early. So that'd be one, two, Ritual for four, Essence for six, or Grove's Call Wild Fruit for six. I'll just have to see. But yeah, that's going to conclude this video, guys. 
I hope this was helpful for you. Um, this was a long video, so I apologize for that, but that is basically all my thoughts for the beginning of this league. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great league start.